Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the workers, the leaders, the development tonight. And we're asking, Lord, that you bless and reward the faithfulness of your people in Jesus' name. We have defied all the conditions around to be here because we love you. And we love your work. And we love your word. We're praying, Lord, that none of us will miss the reward of commitment in Jesus' name. Turn our lives around for the better. Make us better leaders to lead your people in Jesus' name. Speak to every heart today. In Jesus' name we pray. And the leaders said, God bless you. You can sit down. We're looking at Matthew chapter 15. I'm reading some selected verses there. Matthew chapter 15, verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Then in verse 6, it says, And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. That's what they said. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. In verse 9, but in vain, they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Verse 12, it says in verse 12, then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after this, after they heard the saying, 13, And he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. In verse 14, it says, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. As we look at this chapter today, we're looking at the traditions of the religious people on the one hand, and the truth that Christ came to emphasize the truth that saves, the truth that sanctifies, and the truth that leads us in the way of the kingdom of God. Anything different from that, different from the truth of the word of God that can save the soul. Because from a child that was known the scriptures, the truth, which is able to save your soul. And then it says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Anything different from the truth that saves and the truth that sanctifies and the truth that establishes us in the kingdom of God is of no value. And so whatever it is, the tradition the opinion, the religious rites, the religious ceremonies of any group of people, if it turns the mind of people away from salvation, away from getting ready for heaven, that's the tradition of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And Jesus said, every plant that had not been planted by the Father will be rooted out Every doctrine, every opinion, every ideology, every kind of system not established on the truth of the word of the Heavenly Father will be rooted out. And of course, the perpetrators of such tradition themselves, they will be rooted out and thrown off and they will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, we need to make up our minds that we stay on the side of the truth, on the side of the revelation of God, on the side of righteousness that comes by faith in the Lord, rather than by any tradition 
of man. That's why we're looking at the subject tonight, permanently abandon ensnaring traditions and embrace enduring truth. Enduring truth, the truth that lasts and the truth that helps us to remain in the Lord and with the Lord. We uproot, we abandon, we destroy permanently all those ensnaring traditions and we abide in the truth we embrace the truth we believe the truth we internalize the truth we preach the truth we proclaim the truth permanently and consistently and we stand for that truth in the public as well as in the private, in the church, as well as outside the church, permanently abandon ensnaring traditions and embrace enduring truth. There are three points or three subtitles we're looking at. Number one, the graceless fundamentalists in terrible transgression through tradition. They claim to be fundamental, but they're graceless. Fundamentalism without grace, without salvation, fundamentalism without faith in Christ saves no one. And they remain in their terrible transgression through their tradition. Number two, the gloomy fate of trapped teachers of trending traditions the traditions that are trending they hold up to that tradition there tradition there tradition there and people feel that because it's a trending thing religiously in any country in any community in any denomination because it's like that those teachers and preachers and leaders attract they are trapped by their own ideology the gloomy fate of the trapped teachers of trending traditions number three is the great faith for total transformation through the truth you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free and if the son who is the personification of the truth if the son shall make you free ye shall be free and free indeed the great faith for total transformation through the truth we're coming to number one number one the graceless fundamentalists in terrible transgression through tradition there are three things we're looking at here number one the tradition of external righteousness without salvation number two the transgression of exploitative reformers without sincerity number three the transformation with evident righteousness by the Savior. Look at number one. Number one is the tradition of external righteousness without salvation. Matthew chapter 15 verse 2 tells us, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat. And then Jesus asked, verse 3, But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? The Pharisees were the custodians of the law at the time of Jesus in the land of Israel. They were the people that defended very seriously the old covenant and the old testament that God had given unto them. They were the people, the defenders of the faith in quotes at that time. And everything that had been given in the old testament they thought they were to 
oversee everything they were to watch over everything and were to preserve everything that they had been given unfortunately number one they didn't watch over the prophecies the prophecy that christ will come that is all over there in genesis and exodus and deuteronomy and the psalms and in isaiah in jeremiah up till malachi they didn't watch over the prophecy of what was to come and how christ was to come number two they didn't watch over the promises of god they had already replaced the word of god with tradition and so the promises the lord had given what the lord will do when he comes it will save them it will forgive them it will heal them it will bring the mind of god unto them they didn't watch over that they didn't watch over personal experiences they could have like the personal experiences that Abraham had, like David had, like Samuel had, like Enoch had, like Elijah had, the experiences that would link us up to God, they didn't watch over those things. Now they watched over what they themselves have brought into the understanding of religion. There are people like that today, and we might find people like that in our midst as well. We have come in, and we had the word of salvation, and we had the word of holiness, and we had the word of being ready and prepared to get to heaven, and the word of prophecy that Christ is coming. It will come, and the dead will rise, and then we who are alive will be raised up together with them. But now, we're no more watching over the prophecies no more watching over the promises no, no more watching over the great commission that the lord has given us we now have some traditions of the denomination and the tradition and the opinions that we're watching over this we're forgotten the word the lord has given us and then jesus said that those pharisees they made void the words of God by their tradition. There are people today, where do you lean? Do you lean on tradition? Do you lean on some ideas? Uh, those traditions may be very, very simple. For example, we start the service at this particular time. We set the time. We gave the time. We end the service at this particular time. We search that time. If we watch over that, more than we watch over people repenting, people being restored to the Lord, and people getting ready for heaven, and people obeying the word of God, and having the grace, the grace to live in righteousness. And we're no more watching over the holiness we're watching over the hour. We're no more watching over the truth of the word of God that saves, that makes us remain honest and upright and truthful. But we're watching over external things. There are people who watch over the external dressing. Whether you use jewelry or you don't use jewelry, whether you wear long garment, you don't wear long garment, whether the length of your dress as a lady is up to this or not, we're not watching over the anger in the heart. We're not watching against the jealousy in the heart. We're not watching over the internal righteousness and the internal holiness that God expects will become like the Pharisees. We're so serious and we're so strict on what does not matter in getting to heaven. And then we're loose and careless on what matters in get into heaven that's why christ asked them and said unto them why do you transgress the commandment of god by your tradition and we're looking at chapter 23 of matthew and in verse 25 it says woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites understand christ full of love christ is gentle and lowly and yet when he knows anything 
in the lives of the people, in the hearts of the people that will not help them to get to heaven and also will hinder other people from getting to heaven because they were the leaders of the day and the leaders of the people will be so strong against them and they will condemn that attitude and that tradition and that disposition that tries to say where the truth people and where the people leading you into the kingdom of God yet they were blocking the way for them so it was very strong and he said woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye clean ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter but within they are full of extortion and excess in verse 28 it says in verse 28 even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men appear righteous unto men but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity that's what we need to check up in our own personal experience we try many people try to maintain the outward form the outward format of deeper life bible church the externals and they are very very strict on that but the internal is neglected there's no time to pray there's no time to examine our hearts there's no time to say am i ready for the coming of the lord am i watching over the the principles of the world the prophecy of the world the promises in the world do i have in me the heart to obey the lord all the time or is it just the external thing that you know we're not very serious about that's why jesus said that outward kind of religion that is based on tradition that we have established here and there it doesn't matter in the sight of god because we're full of hypocrisy and iniquity look at verse 33 in verse 33 ye serpents and generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell let's look at number two number two we're looking at the uh, the transgression of exploitative reformers without sincerity they were watching over yeah, they wash their hands and it's religious thing it's not because they're not thinking of bacteria they're not thinking of hygiene they're not thinking of uh, you know the health of the people of course if you want to remain healthy you need to wash your hand you go to the restroom before you come out wash your hand even apart from covid or no covid you need to uh, observe those hygienic things but in their own case they were doing that because of religion and they were saying your disciples don't wash their hands when they eat but now the Lord Jesus Christ corrected them they were exploitative they thought they were for reformation they wanted to reform the land and reform religion and reform the actions of people there are people like that in our midst. They come into our midst. They become workers. They become leaders. And then they look at everything we're doing. Uh, salvation, sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism, getting ready for the rapture. They say that's not their interest. Their interest is they must reform the church. And how are they going to reform the church? They must cut down the time of preaching to this that's reformation what they have learned in the world in their profession this is how uh, people are supposed to talk people are supposed to interpret the word and people are supposed to you know have this attitude that attitude communication they want to reform our communication they want to reform our application of the word they want to reform the, the time we have the 
service. They want to reform our marriages. They want to reform everything, not according to the word. Like the Pharisees, that they, all they wanted to do was to reform Christ. He came from heaven. He brought the message from heaven. But their own is that they had their own idea of religion. Whatever you bought from heaven and whatever the purpose of leading people to heaven, that's not their concern. Their concern was that they will reform and they might get to you. They might ask for your help so that you join them and you become a clique in the church. And you become a kind of special group in the church that by pressure, that by force and by whatever, even by hypocrisy and lying, you want to reform the church so that we become a nominal church. I pray God will not allow them to succeed. Amen. It tells us in Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 4, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that causes father or mother, let him die the death. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, but ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, that he is. All that I would have spent in taking care of father, taking care of mother, I've already put it in the synagogue. I've already donated it to the priest. I've already given it to the temple. So I cannot take care of you anymore. All my resources are put in the temple. And Jesus then said in verse 6, it says, And the honor not, he honor not his father or his mother, and you say he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of non effect by your tradition. Do we do that? That we now brainwash young people not to give honor to their father, not to give honor to their mother. We want to replace their father, replace their mother. And whatever we tell them, that's what they do. And if the child said, but the Bible says, they say, this is church and I am your leader here. And when I tell you to do this, final. Now, those are like the Pharisees, and it's not only the father and the mother. The Bible says in the New Testament, it says, Obey them that have the rule over you. You have a pastor, you have a leader, you have a shepherd, you have a teacher of the word of God. The word of God is very clear. Obey them that have the rule over you. And you are subjected to the word of God that they are teaching you. But those Pharisees and those Sadducees will come and say, there's nothing like that. We're trying to reform the church. We're trying to reform the church not to look up to a man, not to look up to a woman leader or anybody. We are the people here and we control the mind of everyone. Even the pastor himself has to be subjected under what we want. If he doesn't, he knows that we can deal with him with various methods. Have we not changed the word of God? Have we not then made our tradition, our kind of reformation we want to carry out to have supremacy above the word of God? And Jesus said, by their tradition, they had done that, and that wasn't the right thing. And there are people who make profit in that. In Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 14. Galatians chapter 1, verse 14. And profited in the Jewish religion above many, my equals. It's like it pays them. They want to be on a pedestal. They want to be at a high level that we're in charge and we're in control. Pastor, well, we allow him to preach. But whatever he preaches, we are still going to be in charge. And leaders of any, any area, they can do whatever they are doing, but we are in charge. And that's the profit they have 
it is a kind of prophet that puts them in a position that God had not placed them. And Paul the apostle said, in his tradition, he profited in the Jews' religion above many, his equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But he wasn't saved. He wasn't born again. He wasn't a child of God. And these Pharisees that were doing what they were doing, zealous for the tradition of the elders and for the tradition of their fathers, they were not born again. They rejected Jesus. And right now, where are they in eternity? That's why we need to come back and not just read these scriptures and say, okay, that's what they did at that time. What are we doing at our own time. Look at number three here. Number three, the transformation with evident righteousness by the Savior. The transformation that came Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 23. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 23, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. That's Paul the Apostle, a traditionalist, a religious Pharisee, a kind of fanatic. And yet now, the grace of God came to him, and the change and the transformation came to him. And now, the gospel he persecuted before, and the people of God he persecuted before, a change now came. Instead of trying to change them, he was now transformed, he was now changed, and they heard of him that he that persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which he was destroyed and then in verse 24 it says and they glorified God in me that's what the Lord expects that there'll be such a mighty change in us that we abandon our tradition and all the things we do Contrary to the truth of the word that will submerge and subdue and that will make people forget the word of God, we jettison and abandon all those things and then we call upon the Lord for a real change of heart and for a real transformation. And we can now offer ourselves unto God not to defend tradition, not to protect uh, tradition, and not to be swallowed up by tradition but to handle the word of God with all sincerity and honesty without hypocrisy. In Romans chapter 12, looking at verse 1, Romans chapter 12, looking at verse 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, the mercy that saved us, the mercy that sanctified us, the mercy that healed us, I beseech you, because you have tasted, because you have received of the mercies of God that he presents your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and then in verse 2 he tells us in verse 2 and be not conformed to this world the world has its tradition the world has its practice and the world has all the principles by which they work and when you get to a place of work uh, they school you and they kind of uh, tell you the way they do things there that over here is how they do their thing and these are the peculiar things they have introduced in that department and nothing they do here must go out anywhere. If they change your seat, it stops here. If they kind of uh, modify things, it stops here. Anything, that, that's the world. And those are the traditions in the world. There's religious tradition. There is political tradition. There's worldly tradition. And when you come into the midst of the people of God, all those things are not there. You don't have the worldly tradition and you don't have the religious tradition 
condition all you do now is that you understand everything that is of the world you will not uh, do any of those things and the signs they give if uh, for example you are working in the world and you are in a particular uh, department and they have already told you this is the tradition here this is the way they do things here and uh, if you are talking to another person in another department and they are passing by and then they see that you are likely to be divulging the secret of that department they stand there and look at you and they make a particular sign which the other fellow may not understand and then you recollect yourself i know what he's telling me i'm trying to flout the tradition that they already told us and then you change everything if that comes to your life now if you are now like you are watching over other people and if they are free free to obey the lord and free to serve the lord and they are doing what is right and then you come in you see that uh -uh, uh, that man is trying to he might get to the point he reveals what he shouldn't reveal you're not standing for the truth anymore. You're standing for tradition. And you are afraid that your tradition may be broken. All those things will hinder people from getting to heaven because hypocrisy has come in. Worldliness has come in. Traditions of the world, they have all come in. That's why he's saying, be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god we're coming to point number two point number two we're looking at the gloomy fate of trapped teachers of trending traditions sometimes traditionalists and hypocrites and religious people may know that this is wrong and they may have the internal secret fear if i continue like this will i get to heaven but they are trapped they don't know how to come out of that trap and by habit they continue that habitual sin meanwhile their heart is telling them looks like you're trapped looks like this behavior and this conduct you are entrenched in it and you are into this tradition and you are not really serving the lord anymore you're like an empty carcass but you need to break that bond and you need to know that your might and your allegiance is to god and god alone that's what will help you to come out of that trap. The gloomy fate of trapped teachers of trending tradition. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the reaction of pretenders in religious tradition. Number two, the rooting up of plants in reprobate trenches. Number three, the recompense of people rigid in tradition. Look at number one. Number one, the reaction of pretenders in religious tradition. Look at Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou? that the pharisees were offended after they heard this saying think about that when that woman who was taking adultery had the word of god she wasn't offended anyone who plans to repent anyone who plans to have salvation anyone who plans to get to heaven doesn't get offended when Zacchaeus came down from the top of the tree, 
And the people say that Christ has gone to be with a sinner. And they called him a sinner openly. He wasn't offended. He was looking for salvation. Anyone that is wanting salvation wants a change of life and wants to get to heaven is not offended by preaching. And when the disciples heard, as Jesus told them, that except to be humble and become like a little child and be really converted, you'll not get to the kingdom of God. They didn't get, they didn't get offended. When people are looking for heaven, when all their goal, all their desire is to get to heaven, the word they hear, even if it condemns their allegiance to tradition, if it condemns the position they hold and where they stand, they're not offended. Is the people who are are not asking for salvation the people who are only for religion the people who just want to keep on following the trending tradition of the day they're the people that get offended when the word of god gets to them and so the disciples said unto him do you know that the pharisees were offended after they heard this saying i pray you'll not be offended I will not be offended. I praise God in my own personal life that when I became born again, all I was asking for was the salvation of the Lord. And then I wanted to propagate and spread that salvation. Let me tell you this. Uh, my pastor at that time, not in Lagos, but I was in the interior at that time in the state where God born again. He wasn't happy with something about me. He wasn't happy that I didn't give all the attention I needed to give to music and all that. And they needed an organist in the church. And, um, you know, I wasn't uh, really coming up the way they wanted. They wanted me to have that discipline, that experience, that experience. And then they'll shovel me in. But I was looking in another direction. And he was preaching one Sunday morning. And then he, as he was preaching... He became so taken with the message that he mentioned my name, uh, rebuking me directly in his message. And he mentioned my name and said, Kumuyi and all that. I even thought he wanted me to stand up. So I stood up. He said, sit down, sit down. And then I sat down. I wasn't ashamed. I knew he's the pastor. I'm not going to teach him how to preach. The following Sunday, I still came to church. The following month, I still came to church, and I still remained in that church until, uh, because of evangelism and everything I was doing for Bible study at that time, they felt I couldn't stay there having a church, according to them, within the church. I wasn't offended when they announced my name and even excommunicated me. I wasn't offended. The following week, I went to the overseer and, you know, discussed with him and asked him, why did you take this step? This is what I'm doing. Why did you announce my name? He said what he wanted to say. And I still kept on visiting him when you want salvation. And when you want to keep in salvation and keep in the way of the Lord, the preachers are not to be looking at our faces before they preach what they need to preach. But these people, they were offended. Thank God I will not be offended. I can't hear you very well. Look at Galatians chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 16. Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, it says in Galatians 4, 16, I might therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Paul the Apostle was asking the Galatians, now, what's your attitude? What's your disposition? Are you taking me as an enemy because I say that you must remain in salvation if you're going to get to heaven? Are you taking me as an enemy because I re-emphasize over and over that uh, circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing. 
but a new creature am i your enemies because now i emphasize follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord i pray you'll not be offended the reaction of those pretenders in religious tradition let's look at number two here number two is the rooting up of plants in reprobate trenches it says in matthew chapter 15 and i'm reading from verse 13 and he answered and said every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up every preacher every pharisee every religionist every traditionalist that is not sent by the father wanting to obtain the doctrine of salvation by grace through faith every plant every preacher that the heavenly father has not planted and they just come in and they want to emphasize tradition above the truth of the word of god the lord himself said the heavenly father will root them up give me a good amen, amen. every idea every ideology every principle every kind of authority every authoritative person and every tradition every religious uh, devotion that the heavenly father has not planted in his kingdom which is derailing the kingdom which is destroying the kingdom which is bringing the people the minds of the people of god away from the truth that leads to real salvation and sanctification and is leading us and is leading the church to become nominal to become external and to have to be a prayerless church that doesn't have any transformation of character every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up i pray we will not be among the people that god will decide that i have to root him up i have to root her up i pray will remain steadfast in the kingdom of god in jesus name look at number three number three the recompense of people rigid in transgression it tells us in Hosea chapter 4 reading from verse 17 Hosea chapter 4 reading from verse 17 Ephraim is joined to idols let him alone when God has spoken and spoken and spoken and uh, you know the Ephraimites and the Pharisees and the traditionalists they say to themselves it's just a period let him keep talking for some time after that time when he gets tired of emphasizing the truth and the salvation and the sanctification and the holiness we are still here they're rigid in their transgression and the Lord will say, what can he do again? Leave them alone. I will not be like that. I said, you will not be like that. The Lord keep us in Jesus' name. It says in Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 14 it says let them alone that's exactly what Hosea had prophesied in chapter 4 verse 17 which we have read let them alone they be blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind both shall fall into the ditch the traditionalists and the religious rigid people that say they are leading other people they themselves they fall into the ditch on the day of judgment and the people they are leading they also fall into the ditch we are coming to point number three point number three is the great faith for total transformation through the truth 
it tells us in Matthew chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 21. Then Jesus went there and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. In verse 22, it says, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil in verse 23 and he answered her not a word and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she cries after us verse 24 it says but he answered and said i am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of israel verse 25 then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. In verse 26, but he answered and said, It is not meat, it is not right to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Verse 27, and she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table and then in verse 28 then jesus answered and said unto her o woman great is thy faith be it unto thee even as thou wilt and her daughter was made whole that very hour I pray that that result of faith will be reproduced in our lives in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the test of guided faith against all hindrances. Number two, the tenacity of guarded faith with humility. And then number three, the triumph of great faith in the heart. Look at number one. Number one is the test of guided faith against all hindrances. While the woman was coming, she knew she was coming to Jesus. She was coming for a definite thing, and she had that definite thing in mind. Whatever Jesus would say will not hinder that purpose. And whatever attitude the disciples will have against her, not on her side, will not hinder that purpose. And whatever circumstances or situations she would meet as she came to Christ, she had made up her mind, I am going for something. I'm going to get what i want i'm coming for his mercy the mercy that will deliver the mercy that will heal and as i come for that nothing will stop me we need to have that attitude that when you are coming to the service when you are coming to hear the word of god anytime that you are coming you have something in mind and you are telling the lord oh lord that's why i'm coming I want to be fully restored. I want to be totally, completely holy. I want to be ready for the rapture. I want to be ready for anything you have. And I want you to kind of recollect and regather and renew my experience that I have in you. When that is there and everyone has that mind in the Lord, whatever is happening and whatever you meet and whatever confronts you will not jolt you. That's why the woman had what she wanted. In Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 21, then Jesus went there and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And then in verse 22, it says, in verse 22, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me. That's what she wanted. That's what she concentrated on. And that is what she demanded of the Lord. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter 
is grievously vexed with a devil. And then in verse 23, it says, But he answered him not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. If she didn't have faith, steadfast faith in the Lord, and steadfast expectation for what she wanted, all that could have stopped her. Nothing will stop you. There are people just seeing the cloud. It has not started raining yet. That will stop them. I wanted to go for the Monday Bible study. I wanted to go to the Tuesday leadership development. I wanted to go to the Thursday meeting. I wanted to go to the Saturday training workers uh, meeting. But look at the clouds. It has not even started raining yet. Or somebody told them, they hold up in town. You cannot believe. It's like we don't know what has happened. That is enough to stop them. Or maybe they have a little hunger that um, they say, I don't know whether I can manage myself and go there and then wait until I come back before I can eat. It may be a friend call them, a distraction that came to them. That is enough to stop some people. It may be that they have a project the following week or they are going to travel the following week and even though the week has not come, that's enough to stop some people. But they this woman, nothing will stop her. Nothing will stop you. And so she kept on. And then we're told in verse 24. In verse 24, and he answered and said, I am not saved, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She didn't stop because of that. I will not stop. You will not stop. Look at point number two here. Number two is the tenacity of guarded faith with humility. Matthew chapter 15, we're reading from verse 25. Then came she and worshipped him, still worshipped, after the Lord had said, I'm not saved, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, still coming to worship after the disciples said, she cries after us, send her away. That's the attitude of a person that has faith in the Lord, and that faith is guarded. It says, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me still called him lord and then in verse 26 and he answered and said it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs that should have finalized her respecting and responding to the lord in the proper way do you mean i'm a dog do you mean that my people, the Gentiles, where I came from, were all dogs? Do you mean that the Jews are better than we are? Are you also having religious discrimination, racial discrimination? She didn't say that. Watch your language. If you have the right intention, if you have the right disposition, you will speak like a person that is asking for something. You'll have respect for the Lord, respect for the person. You desire a blessing to come to you. This woman did not show any disrespect. When Jesus said, it is not right to give the children's bread and give to dogs and then the woman responded how did the woman respond uh, let's look at verse 27 in verse 20 she said truth truth lord still called him lord yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table and she got what she wanted with the right attitude, the right disposition. 
you will get what you are asking for. Look at verse 28. Look at the next point there. The last line, number three, is the triumph of great faith in the heart. In Matthew chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 28. Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be each unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. God will answer your prayer. Your faith will not be derailed in Jesus' name. Your heart will not become disrespectful. You will still respect the source of the word and the source of the wonders and the source of the work of God coming into your life and as you open your mouth and you say, Lord, here is what I want and you are not diverted here and there, supernatural answer will come to your prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Your faith will triumph. Your faith will overcome. Your faith will overpower anything and whatever is standing in your way in Jesus' name. Tradition gone. Transgression gone. Hypocrisy gone. And a defiled heart all gone. But now your heart is centered on God. And the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin. And you stand on the truth. If you have gone astray in the past. And you are now defending religion. Defending opinions. Defending hypocrisies. Defending religious rights and ceremonies beyond the truth of salvation and the truth of sanctification the Lord has called you back today you'll come back to the center of the wheel and the word and the way of God in Jesus name and you will not either intentionally or mistakenly you will not cloud steal the word of God from the hearts of people and you will not be offended at the truth. You will stand in the truth, for the truth, by the truth, all the days of your life in Jesus' name. And you and I will join hearts together, minds together, consecration together, earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints in Jesus' name. Are you there? Can God depend on you? Can we count on you? Rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer that the spirit of the Pharisees, of the traditionalists, the spirit of those pretenders will not be in your life. You will stand, stand firm in the word, in the way, in the will of God. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.